Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us, Lord, to come back to thy house, Lord, and give this morning. Lord, to lift voices up to you in song, and Lord, to praise you, Lord, for being King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Father, we just want to thank you, O oh God, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, again this morning. Lord, for every person, Lord, that came this way, God, we're truly thankful, Lord, today. Father, I just ask you, O oh God, now that your will, Lord, will be done, Father, in this place, Lord, today. Lord, just whatever that might be, God, I pray, Lord, that it be done. <coughs> Lord, if it's salvation, God, it needs to be imparted to a lost soul. God, I pray that will happen. God, if it's a Christian, God, that needs to come and, Lord, get their life right with you, then, Father, I pray that will happen. Lord, that will be done, God, in this place today. Lord, whatever needs to be done, God, we just lift it up to you. Well, Lord, I just ask you now, if you'll just take me, God, get me out of the way. Father, just have me behind the cross. And, God, just put the words, Lord, in my heart and my mouth, God, that you would have spoken, Lord, here today. And Father, we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and the honor and the glory, God, for it all. For it's in Jesus' name, Lord, that we ask. And amen. amen. You know, it's a wonderful thing this morning to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's a wonderful thing this morning to know Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior today. It's wonderful to know that we have been bought with a price and that we're sealed until the day of redemption today. Folks, we can rejoice in this today. We can rejoice in what Jesus has done for you and for me today. He's done something that nobody else can do. And that He has done something that nobody else will ever do. Because there's no need for anything like this to ever be done again. God would not send His Son back again because it was done one time. And one time was enough to cover the sins of the whole world in which we live today. It's wonderful to be redeemed today. It's wonderful to be sanctified today. It's wonderful to be set apart. It's wonderful to be called a peculiar person in the Lord Jesus today. Because we're living in a time today. And we're living in the day and this hour that we live that Jesus is not popular today. And people is trying to squish His name and trying to get His name plumb out of society. Folks, I submit to you today that's never happened and it'll never happen. Jesus is alive and He is well today. He's still at the right hand of the Father there today. He's still making intercession for this very service today. He's making intercession for every person that is sitting in this sanctuary today. I tell you, it's just wonderful today just to be justified. Just to be justified by the Lord God Himself there and be reconciled by that blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Folks, we got something to praise Him for today. We got something to thank Him for. We got something to be thankful for today. Give Him praise this morning. I tell you, He's worthy to be praised. Nobody else is worthy of that. But He is worthy of our praise today. You know, we say sometimes, we say, well, people are not saying so much. They are not praised so much. Folks, it's nothing more reverent to God than singing hymns unto Him and lifting voices up unto Him. Because that is a ministry today. There is nothing more reverent than giving praise to the Lord Jesus. But that praise must come from our heart. It must not be an outward praise, but it's a heart praise that we lift voices up unto Him. Would it not be a sad thing today? if we were never able to hear the Word of God again. Wouldn't it be terrible if we would never be able to hear the Word of God sang in a hymn or preached from the pulpits of our churches today? I believe it's in Hebrews chapter 12, about verse 19. It makes a statement in there about that, that the words, that the voices of the words came and that the Word should not be uh, heard of them again now. You see, what has happened today, this Word of God is trying to be squished today. This Word of God is trying to be put out of existence today. I just saw that the other day on the news where the Holy Word of God, the Holy Bible, was put in the fictional section of the bookstore. I'm going to tell you something, folks. There ain't nothing fiction about this. This is truth. From in the beginning to the amen and everything in between. It is truth. It is the holy and inspired Word of God that was given to holy men 
And they penned this word. And they penned it for you and for me today. That we may learn. And that we can study from this. And that we can feel the presence of God. That we can feel the Holy Spirit of God. When we pick this book up. And when we begin to read this book. And the Holy Spirit begin to speak to our heart. And our hearts become broken. And then we realize that we're only sinful people living before a holy God today because the wrath of God will fall on those that are ungodly and unrighteous today. You see, we are living in a society today of unrighteousness and ungodliness today because every time that you look around, you see everything going on is contrary to the Word of God. Look at the book of Romans chapter 1 and a verse about 18. And then you'll see there that the modern day world today has come alive. That a bunch of homosexuality has come about. And folks today, it's an abomination against God. Yeah. It was then and it still is today. Yeah. But we're living in a time where this mess is being glorified. Where this mess is being lifted up. Even from our nation's leader. Oh, this is the grandest thing that ever was. I don't know about you, but I don't want Sue and Tushy being married today. I don't like that. Adam and Steve, it's not bad. It is Adam and Eve, and that's the way that God intended it, and that's the way that it will be until Jesus And if we look at that, you begin to read that, you'll see every ungodliness that was going on then, and it's the same thing that is going on in society today. It ain't a thing in the world changed. It was glorified then. It's glorified today. Men leaving natural affection for a woman and then becoming attached to a man. Woman leaving natural affection of a man and her husband and taking up with a woman. There ain't nothing good about that. It ain't nothing that even looks good about that today. Man, I'm telling you today, We've got something to be thankful for. We've got something to be thankful for. When God saved our old sin wretched soul, when He came into our heart, when He changed us, and He made us a new creature, He made us a new person in Him today. Well, we've got something to praise Him for. We've got something that we can come before the throne of grace and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for me today. You say, we've got a birthright. We've got a birthright. We have become, we have become the son and daughters of the Most High. You see, Jesus was the firstborn that was there. His inheritance was everything. You see, back in the Old Testament, I think in Genesis about verse, uh, chapter 25, you'll begin to read a story there about Jacob and Esau. We see how did Isaac and Rebekah birthed two sons. Rebekah loved one, and, he, uh, and Isaac loved the other. We can see that the one that Isaac loved was the firstborn. He was entitled to the father's uh, 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 possessions that he had. Because that's just the way it was. The firstborn received it all. And so Jacob and Rebecca, they became jealous. Woo! Don't that sound good today? Ain't a bunch of church members jealous today. Ain't a bunch of churches jealous today. Ain't a bunch of preachers jealous today. Sure are today. Jealousy's destroying things today. Get over it. Look up. Jesus is coming. Well, old Esau got faint. He got weak. He got weak in the spirit. He got weak in God. He got weak physically. Boy, and old Jacob and Rebecca, they saw their chance. And they said, Sell me your birthright. He said, You can have the thing. Just give me something to eat. Basically, what he said, he said, I'm weak and I'm going to faint. He said, I need something to eat. Give me some of that red pottage. I don't know what red pottage was, but it must have been good if he was going to demand his life upon him. So they gave it to him and he sold his birthright. 
He sold his birthright. Can I tell you today, you can never sell your birthright. You can never trade it. You can never, you can never throw it away because it's something that God's put in you. You've been redeemed, my friend. You've been chosen by the Most High God. You've been chosen. And you've been drug out of a sinful world. He had drug you out of that mire clay. He's drug you out of that hog pond. He's drawn you up. He cleaned you up. And He set you up on a solid rock. He set you up on a solid foundation. My friend today, that's what Jesus has did. Nobody else could do that. But Jesus did it because He loved us. Because He saw that we were sinful and we needed a way to get to heaven there one glorious day. Boy, and that is a coming too. We're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. Those that are redeemed. Those that are sanctified. Those that are justified. Those that have been reconciled by the blood of the Lamb. I'm telling you folks, we're going to heaven. Ain't nothing going to hold us here. Ain't nothing hold us down. When the trumpet sound, we're out of here. We're going to receive that Roman crown that Jesus had prepared for you and me. Because the Bible tells me that when He comes, when He shall appear, that we shall be like Him. Now, won't that be a shouting time in glory? Won't that be a shouting time around the throne of God? Won't that be a time that we can look to the Savior high and lift it up on the throne of glory and give Him a little praise and give Him a little praise? Glory! 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 Anything that touched the mountain that they killed. God called Moses up because he had a message for him. He had a message for him. He had the commandments ready for him. So Moses goes up and he listens to God. And God gives him the message that he wants to deliver to the people. Folks, there is a message that needs to be delivered to the people today. Is that Jesus still saves Jesus still loves. The same God that the disciples same Jesus that the disciples say is sending into the heavens is going to be the same one that you and I are going to see when he comes back again. Like that song that Beverly sang. He's going to walk out of the sky. One of these days when you're least expecting. You ain't got nothing on your mind. You ain't got Jesus on your mind. You got everything in the world but Jesus. Then we're going to look up. And there the blessed Savior is yeah. stepping out of that sky to get his church and to take us home and be with him forevermore. And it won't be no kind of thing. It'll be a one way ticket. We'll be in glory. We'll be in glory. Forever. And forever. And forever. Answer something for me this morning. Why in the world would anybody? Not want to go to heaven. Well, preacher, everybody wants to go to heaven. Evidently not. If they did, they've been told how to get there. Right. And they won't do it. That's like getting in a car and not knowing where you're going. Not having no directions, you're probably not going to get there. Same way with God's grace. If God's grace do not guide you, if you ain't instructed how to get there, then you ain't going to get there. Right. If you don't follow the directions that is laid out in this blessed book, except we get there. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he will in no wise enter in to the kingdom of God. Right. But if he rejects the Lord Jesus, then he is condemned already to a place called hell, to a place that the unsaved will go, where the unredeemed will go and be there forevermore. There'll be no escape. There'll be no getting out. There'll be no second chances. There'll be no making bargains with God. There'll be no time to say, just give me one more chance. It'll all be over with. It'll be done. And it'll be cast and rest in a place called hell through all eternity. When Jesus is saying, 
Call unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. Or oh, it's easy. You see, we see that when we follow the old path that Jeremiah laid out, that they was good and they was good. And we can find rest to our soul. And we can find rest unto our weary soul in this blessed book today. This is rest. This is peace. This is comfort. This is love. This is instruction. This is God's love letter. This is what God has sent you and I to give us directions Amen. to get into this glorious place called heaven today. Why does anybody not want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven, but have you been saved? Have you been redeemed? Have you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life today? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt today that you've been redeemed and that you've been touched by the Master and that He's changed you and that He's given you a rightful place, that He's given you a birthright this morning, being a child of the Most High, being a child of the Lord Jesus Christ today. That's what happens when we're saved, when we're redeemed. Then we become a child of the Most High. We become those adopted sons and daughters into the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go to heaven? Don't you want to see Jesus? Don't you want to see those that's already gone on before us? Don't you want to see your loved ones? Don't you want to see old Paul and Silas, Matthew, James, John, Peter, all these old disciples, old Moses, Noah, see them all. Hey, boy, we've read about you. Hey, we've read about you, Noah. How you got out in the middle of the desert. We read about you. We read about you in God's Word. Tell me about it. Tell me how it was. Tell me about that voice that you heard. Oh, just tell me just a little bit about it. Oh, I'm sure that it'll take you a few thousand years to just kind of explain it to us word for word. Moses, how was it when you went before old Pharaoh? Moses, how was it? How did you have the strength to go? Keep going and going and going. Folks, it should be a good example for you and I to keep going and keep going and keep hanging on. Just get a hold of the horns of the altar and hanging on and not let go. Hey, hang on. The rewards is out of this world. Hang on, Jesus is coming. Hang on, He loves you. Hang on, He died for you. Hang on, He made you a promise that He's coming back. I believe in each and every word today. I believe that He's coming back. We're going to look to the east and He'll take that step and He'll come out of that sky. And boy, when He does, woo! What a time and glory we'll have. Because we know that He lives. We know that He's who He said He was. We know that we're going to be with Him forevermore. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go to this blessed place? Don't you want to know? Just go ahead and get it settled today. Just go ahead and get it settled today. Don't put it off any longer. Don't put it off. Well, God, preacher, I will tonight. No, it don't work that way. You'll do it when that Holy Spirit of God begins to speak to you. And that Holy Spirit of God begins to draw you to a loving Savior. By the man named Jesus, that'll save your soul and fit you for heaven. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go and see this man called Jesus? Don't you want to go and see the one that gave his life? And he has prepared that place for you. For me. It'll be an everlasting place, an eternal place, a place of beauty that is undescribed to mortal man. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Father, we love you. Lord, I praise you and I thank you this morning. Lord, I ask you now, Lord, that it just might be good. 
talking to a different boy. Go ahead and ask for Daddy's ugly, dang, I'm saved. Father, I pray. Right now, that's the way Holy Spirit of God begin to speak to them. Father, I pray that Holy Spirit of God, Lord, will come into such a way right now. God, rest on every person, Lord, that is here. God, let us know where we stand. Let us know where we're weak. Let us know, God, what that you would have us to do. But, Lord, more than anything, God, I pray that there'll be one. That's what I'm saying, that will want to go to heaven. Lord, that they'll come. They'll give their heart and life to you, Lord, this day. This day. And reserve their seat on that glory bound experience. That we will get home one day when Jesus shall plant. Father, if it's a Christian here, oh God, it's out of your will. Father, I pray they come. God, let nothing be left undone when we leave this building. Lord, let nothing be undone. Let everything be done as you would have it done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me this moment. Lord, it's welcome to you this morning. You should have already been here. Well, Lord, they spoke to me, honey, get saved, you wait. Get right with God, he'll speak to you. Get right with him, you'll hear that still small voice. Sit against the spirit. But more than anything else, I beg you. I beg you if you hear lost and I've done that say that you'll come. That you'll come. And let him change your life forever. Would you come to this
hear the word of God again. Would it be terrible this morning if you never heard the gospel message preached again? If God shut up the portals of heaven and He shut up the mouth of the Christians and this word would never go forward again, would that not be a terrible thing? Folks, it's in progress right now. It's in progress to get this done away with. To get every aspect of it done away with, it's in progress right now. We better take it while we've got it. We better believe it while we have it. And apply it to our hearts. The only thing that's going to get us through in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What's going to get us through? What's going to get us through? We don't have much time. We don't have much time left. The church is going to be out of here. The church is going to be gone. Would it not be terrible if you never heard the Word of God again? If you never heard somebody beg you, you come and give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Well, that's not a terrible thing. It's one of the worst things that we could ever experience. Never to feel God's presence. Never to feel that Holy Ghost. Never to hear Him speak to us again. Oh, wouldn't it be terrible? We've got something to thank Him for. We've got something to praise Him for. If you're saved in this place today, if you're saved, give God some praise.